So Bill Clinton decided to give his speech, and he asked us now, are you proud to be a Democrat? I would say no, and I'll tell you why, because Kamala Harris is our nominee, someone who couldn't campaign in 2020 to save her life, and now she's running to be the most powerful person in the world. The first thing he went on to is to say his wife gave a great speech at the DNC. I don't know if anyone else watched the Hillary Clinton speech. She talked about herself most of the time and tried to rewrite history in saying that she paved the way that Kamala Harris could be president. And the main reason the powers that be do not like Donald Trump is because they believe he's selfish. I hate to break it to him, Hillary Clinton is just as selfish as Donald Trump. And if y'all can't see that in her DNC speech, I don't know what to tell you. And then he goes on to brag about the current US economy. You mean the economy where no one can afford anything, Bill Clinton? Where all of us are struggling and no one can actually own a home and we're doing worse than our parents did? That American economy? Then he went on to say that Joe Biden has brought peace and security to the world. Has anyone checked that the world's kind of on fire right now? I mean, we're stuck with the possibility that we might actually go to war with Iran and the whole Ukraine situation. A valid point he brought up is Donald Trump is older than he is, so Donald Trump is now the old guy in the race. I don't know how America can't seem to find anyone other than like 70 plus year olds to run the country. Could it be these people are just curated by the elites and they know they've been served by these people all their life and they're like, well, I'll go with this person. He's been serving me well enough and screwing over the American people. Also, if you look at the presidents, you notice that their net worth quadruples when they leave office versus Donald Trump is the only president who actually lost money when he left office. Take that for whatever it's worth. It seems like everyone else got paid off and it looks like Donald Trump got screwed with a bunch of court cases and for some reason he wants to do this again and they wouldn't have brought up any of these charges against him if he didn't run for president again. And then he talks about how the presidency is the hardest job interview in the world and people go to the executive branch hoping that they can solve their problems. And this is where I fundamentally disagree with most Democrats. I don't think the government is here to solve your problems. I think the government does a great job of creating these problems for us. And if you think Donald Trump's going to solve your problems or Kamala Harris is going to solve your problems, these people aren't superheroes. They aren't here to fix your life. They're here for their own glory and hell, if I can get rich in the meantime, I'll do that. Washington is simply a favors factory for the well-connected. That's all it is and that's all it'll ever be. Then he talks about if we possibly elect Donald Trump, they're going to rig the elections from here on out that people won't even have to vote again. Last time I checked, the Republican primaries are actually a lot more open than the Democrat primaries and they play all these games in the Democrat primaries, especially the last three of them. 2016 when Bernie Sanders had a real shot of winning and then Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to step down because it was proven through emails that she wasn't impartial. It seems like there's some rigging here to me. Whereas in 2016, the Republican Party did not want Donald Trump to be their president, but they let the process play out and that's what happened. Donald Trump became president. Part of the reason Donald Trump even ran is because Bill Clinton convinced him to. It's kind of funny seeing Frankenstein turn against the establishment. It reminds me when Jeb Bush said, you're not going to insult your way to the presidency. Well, look how that turned out. He did insult his way to the presidency. <laughs> and again, in 2020, they didn't want Bernie Sanders to be the nominee, so they all coalesced behind Joe Biden. And then he goes on saying that the Democrats need to be tough. I don't know about you, but the Democrats have always been the good cop, bad cop routine. For instance, changing the minimum wage or giving a public option for health care. We can't do any of this. The Republicans don't agree with us, even though we have super majorities when these legislations actually come up. They always seem to find a way to lose. And then he talks about how you shouldn't demean your neighbors because they have different beliefs than you do. And this is the same person married to Hillary Clinton, who's a person who's excellent at talking down to people and just implying they're stupid but simply because they disagree on how Israel's waging their war in Gaza. And we even had some of the delegates try to come out and have their voices heard when Joe Biden was giving his speech, and then people were beating them with signs saying that we love Joe. I don't care what anyone says, the Democratic Party has no interest in giving you change, and they hate dissent. And the last thing he said is Kamala Harris is the candidate of joy. I'm not too joyful about Kamala Harris being the Democratic nominee, and I guarantee the Democrat elite circles did not want Kamala Harris to be their nominee, but unfortunately we're stuck with her.